Last night, my sled got completely buried in snow. I'm gonna have to dig it out this morning. Looks like nothing but white straight ahead. This has been home for me for the past four weeks. It's small and it's a huge mess, much like my apartment at home. There is the stove where I cook my dinner. There's a pot full of ice, so that's the ice that I melt so I can have hot water, so I can have hot drinks and add it to my freeze-dried meal, which is right here. We've got about two weeks left on the trip. We've spent uh, almost four weeks on the ice. It's been a really, really tough trip, and I think we're all looking forward to getting to the pole. I really think we can do it too, but man, it's been tiring. Um, a lot of people have a lot of injuries from the cold. Um, just blisters on their faces and on their legs and on their lips. Uh, so far I've managed to stay pretty much uh, injury free. I keep my face covered with goggles and a face mask during the day so um, I have a little bit a uh, little bit of frost nip on the nose but other than that I'm surviving. Still have all the fingers and toes so that's good and uh, just really looking forward to getting to the South Pole. It's a sunny day in San Francisco, and Allison Levine is heading to the beach, but not to work on her tan. I am down here at Ocean Beach training for a six to eight week expedition to Antarctica. Coming up, extraordinary expedition, a 38 day journey that broke all the records. The first American ever to take the nearly 600 mile journey to the South Pole and triumph victoriously. I was there with four other polar explorers, um, one from Canada, Australia, Norway, and Holland. You start off in the southernmost point of Chile and you take a Russian cargo jet, it's called an Aleutian 76, and you fly to a Chilean camp at a place called Patriot Hills. And this uh, this Russian jet is known for its ability to take off and land on very short crude runways because it has to be able to land on this natural blue ice runway. And then from there you hop on a smaller plane, it's a little ski equipped twin otter plane and you fly out to this ice shelf called uh, the Ronnie Ice Shelf. And from the ice shelf there, that's where we started skiing, from the edge of the ice shelf all the way to the South Pole. And this is a really dangerous thing that you did. And I think a lot of people don't understand the kinds of weird things that happen to your body, too. Because the temperatures are so extreme there, Antarctica is the coldest, windiest place on Earth. And in the summer, the temperatures average minus 50 degrees. So you have to be really careful in these environments to stay covered. You know, mm. any ounce of flesh that's showing is basically going to be frozen off. So I wore um, goggles and a ski mask the entire time. You want to consume around 6,000 calories a day because you're skiing 10 hours a day, hauling a sled that weighs 150 pounds mm. with your gear and supplies and that sled's harnessed to your waist. So you're burning calories just trying to stay warm. You're burning calories skiing 10 hours a day, hauling that huge sled. So um, you know that you're going to lose a lot of weight. I lost about 15% of my body weight by the end of the trip. <laughs> was there any point where you just said, I can't do this anymore? It was a nice trip to the South Pole. Get me out of here. Actually, two or three days into it, I was really struggling with the weight of my sled. And I just thought, all right. I'm in the, you know, the most remote place on the planet. <laughs> I'm freezing and I'm uncomfortable and I'm tired and every muscle in my body is hurting right now, but you are out there. So you just have to realize when you're in those situations that you have to keep pushing through the discomfort. How does it feel too to know that you're the first American to do this? I felt very grateful to have had the opportunity to have that kind of experience. Yeah! It just felt great to be able to go out there and, and do something like this.